How does God really speak to us? Do you know? Do you hear Him speak to you? If you say yes, then when was the last time that He spoke to you? And if you say no, I, I don't know, then you need to know that something is wrong because your relationship with God is not just a monologue where you just talk to Him. It's a dialogue, a conversation, just like any other relationship where you talk to Him and He talks to you and guides you in this life. Now, if you say, Daniel, I don't know how God speaks to us, then it's time to find out. Let's get to the video. Now, just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please consider it and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. All right, so how does God speak to us? Well, there's a few ways and the first and most general way is through His Word, through the Logos Word. The Greek word Logos means the written word, which He already chose to reveal to us. And the Logos word is also a reference to Jesus Himself. Read with me. John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And today, when God speaks to us, He will never ever say anything that is contrary to God's Word. He's always the same. And in Scripture, He tells us who He is, how He thinks, and how He acts. And it is always the same. God says in Isaiah 55 verse 11, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The Bible, the Word of God, is our most valuable treasure on earth because it contains the words of God Himself, truth itself. And some people got so used to it, just having the Bible around, that they don't appreciate it anymore for what it is. You need to know that the Bible is enough for us to be fully complete, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 says, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And now when we read the New Testament, we see that Jesus came to explain the Word to us in more detail. He did not come just to make away with the Old Testament. He came to fulfill it because He is the truth. Jesus says in Matthew 5 verse 17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill it. And He then taught the disciples for three years. Imagine how amazing that was for the disciples walking with Jesus every day, just growing and learning truth. And they carried on His truth, God's truth. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2, For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And then John says in 1 John 1, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. So first, you get to know God through His word. You get to know His big plan and how you should live. But then He also speaks to you through His Word at a specific time. And that takes us to the second point. God also speaks to us through the Rima Word. Rima is God's spoken word. 
It literally means an utterance, individually, collectively, or specifically. So many times, God will speak to you with the Rima word while you are reading the Logos word, the Bible. So while you're reading the Bible, God speaks to you in your spirit a specific Rima word for your specific situation through the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in Matthew 4 verse 4, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Here, Jesus uses the word rima and not logos. And it connects with John 6, verse 63, where Jesus says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So here, Jesus uses the rima word again for the word word. Have you ever heard the rima word, which is the Spirit? The day you became a real reborn Christian, on that day, you received the Holy Spirit, you received a new spiritual nature. And it is this part that communicates to God and also this part where God communicates to you. Remember Jesus said in John 4 verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Now, sadly today, many Christians out there well, a lot of Christians are not real Christians, but then there's also a lot of Christians who are still spiritual babies and they don't know how God speaks to them through the spiritual nature. They don't know how to connect with God through their spirit, to worship Him in truth and in spirit. Now, the Bible, the Logos Bible, the written word, gives us a lot of principles to live by, but it doesn't give us specific commands or specific things for each person where it says, Robert, you have to marry Susan or Joanne, you have to go and take this job next week. It's not that specific. So that is where you come to God. You pray to Him and you ask Him, God, who should I marry? I want to have a husband. God, I want to have a wife. Help me. God, I might have this opportunity to go and work at another place next week. Is, is that your will for me? You pray to Him and this is where He speaks to you through the Spirit. So next time when you read your Bible, ask God to speak to you through the Holy Spirit. Remember, He did not leave us alone. He sent us the Helper, the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in John 16 verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Now listen to this. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is Mine. Therefore, I said that He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit will lead you. When God speaks to you through the Rima word while you're reading the Logos word, He speaks in your spirit and the Spirit tells you what God is saying. So while you're reading a passage, suddenly it just stands out and you know this is for you. It's not an emotional feeling. It's deeper than that. It's in your spirit. And that takes us to the next point. God talks to us through peace, His peace. When God speaks to you through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit usually works in two ways, two main ways, through discernment and peace. Your spirit discerns whether this really is from God or if it's just your own emotions, which you know is on your soul level. And God gives you the peace, that kind of peace that surpasses all understanding, that kind of peace in your spirit. And then you know it's from Him. Now, let me warn you here about something. If you want to do something, if you pray 
for something, then don't do it until you have peace. If you don't have peace, don't do it. This will stop you from making a lot of unnecessary mistakes. You need to know what is God's will for your life and pray. Pray about something. If it's big, if it's small, it doesn't matter. Pray about it until you have peace from God. Jesus says in John 14 verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So don't stop praying until you get the peace from God. It can take a few hours, a few minutes, can take days, weeks, months, even years. But don't stop until you get the peace from God, until He answers you. This is prevailing prayer. You pray and pray until you break through. This is amazing because the moment you feel that peace from God in your spirit, then you know God heard you, He's going to answer you, and it's going to be all right. You can stop praying. And if you do continue to pray, after God gave you, this, gave you this peace, if you still continue to pray, you're wasting your time and you're not listening to God. God can also talk to you through other people. When we read the Bible, we clearly see how God sent certain people to give a message to someone else, like Ananias. Acts 9 verse 10 says, Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So you might be praying to God like Saul did, and you're waiting for an answer from God, and then God might send someone else to give you a message. But also, I want to warn you here, don't just trust anyone that says, hey, I've got a message for you from God. You've got to test it according to Scripture. You've got to test it and pray to God as well to make sure it is from God. 1 John 4 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have come out into the world. If someone tells you something that contradicts Scripture, then you already know, all right, this is not from God. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes. So if He tells you something that contradicts what the Bible, the Logos Word already tells you, then you know it's not from God. All right, so let's move on to the next point. Now, God can also speak to us in supernatural ways through an audible voice, angels, dreams, visions, and so on. But you need to know that this is very, very rare because He usually talks to us through the Word, the Logos Word, through the Holy Spirit, the Rima Word. Hebrews 1 verse 1 to 2 says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. So we know that God speaks to us through the Word, His Word, right? But yes, God can also speak to us through supernatural ways. We hear about it all the time. People uh, giving testimonies of how they came to faith in Christ. We also hear about even Muslims who had dreams about Jesus. We hear about these things all the time, so it does happen. Now, just a few days ago, I received an email from an atheist. <laughs> Early in the morning, he just had a dream, 3 o'clock in the morning, about the end times. And he said, Daniel, you have to understand, I've been an atheist all my life. I never believed any of this stuff. And then this dream was so clear 
and I knew that God was speaking to me. That dream changed him in an instant. He became a Christian. And he asked me, how, how, what am I supposed to do from now on forward? So yes, God does speak to us in supernatural ways. But the general way that He speaks to us is through His Word, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit. God also speaks to us through circumstances, certain situations, by closing some doors and opening other doors. And He also uses these situations, these circumstances, to change us, especially in trials and tribulations. James 1 verse 2 to 5 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So whenever your situation changes, don't just accept that it is just from God, because sometimes it's the devil, you know, he's walking around like a roaring lion, looking whom he can devour and destroy. So pray every time, all the time, and ask, God, is this situation from you? God, is this from you? Is this from you? Be open to anything that can change, that God can allow in your life, but at the same time, pray and ask Him, God, is this from you? If it's not, please protect me and take it away and change the situation. God, if it is from, your, from you, what do you want me to learn? What do you want me to know? Help me to see it and to change if I need to change. Ask Him to reveal Himself to you and to reveal to you what is really going on in a situation, and He will. Breakthrough prayer, prevailing prayer. Don't stop praying until He answers you. Jesus says in Matthew 7 verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Ask, seek, knock. These words show persistence. God wants to teach us how to keep on praying, prevailing prayer. And if you read this in the Greek, it's actually keep on knocking, keep on praying, keep on asking. Sometimes we just ask God just a quick prayer and then we are mad because He doesn't answer us. Sometimes He does, but we don't really hear or we don't know how to understand how He really answers us. But you need to learn how to pray, how to keep on praying, prevailing prayer until God answers you. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. I talked a little bit about this earlier, but I just want to focus in on this a little bit more. The day you became a real reborn Christian, you received the Holy Spirit in you. He came to live inside of you. Jesus says in John 14 verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. And then if we continue to read on in the Gospels, when Jesus left to be with the Father, the Holy Spirit came. And now every time when somebody comes to Jesus Christ and accepts Him as Lord and Savior, they receive the Holy Spirit. He seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, in Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of His glory. So the Holy Spirit is in you, and He helps you to walk with God, to live through the Spirit where you talk to Him and He talks to you. This is the same Spirit that is in all of us believers, Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ. We have the same Spirit in us and that is why we are also like-minded. doesn't matter where you're from, what culture you're from, what color your skin, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Romans 8 verse 14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And it is the Spirit of God 
that guides us with wisdom because He knows the thoughts of God and your thoughts. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 says, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And verse 14 says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. Wow, how amazing is that? The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the things freely given by God. But not only does the Holy Spirit talk to us, He also helps us to pray to God. You know those, those moments where you need to talk to God and you just, you just don't know what to pray. And you ask, God, please help me to pray. And the Holy Spirit will bring those things to your mind that God wants you to pray about. Paul says in Romans 8 verse 26, The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings, too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Now, God does not always talk to us in big ways, in the way that you think He should, but sometimes in a small, still voice. We see this even back in the Old Testament. In 1 Kings 19, verse 11, And He said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And then Elijah heard it. He wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? God always speaks to us. You might say, well, I don't hear him. He doesn't always speak to me. Why, why can't I hear him? Well, maybe because you're not listening. Are you really listening through the Spirit or just for your own soul level, your own emotions, your intellect, your, the feelings and thoughts in your head? Or are you listening with the Spirit in you, the new spiritual nature? And do you really make time for God? Do you go into your room and close the door and just spend time with God? Where you just pray to Him, you have a conversation with Him, or do you just throw a prayer up here, a prayer up there, whenever you think just something just very quickly and you don't really spend time with Him, but you just pray very quickly and you expect God to answer you according to your will. You need to know that God speaks to thousands of His children every day. We can all testify about it because we hear His voice. And God can speak to you in one way or through a few different ways at the same time. You can pray about something, and then you read the Bible and you gain a little bit of knowledge and principles of how to take the situation on. And then God speaks to you through a rima word suddenly through the Holy Spirit and whoosh, you feel it in the Spirit. And then suddenly you get a message from a friend, a Christian brother, and you open up the message and it's the same passage that you were just reading. And then you get the peace from God telling you through the Holy Spirit that it is a message from Him. That's just one example of how God speaks to us. But you need to know sometimes it can take time. God can wait for the right moment to give you an answer. And you need to be content with it. You need to accept it because it might even take years before He answers you. I've talked to a lot of people who pray about, they've been alone for a long time. 
and they just want a husband or a wife, a godly wife or a godly husband, and they pray about this. And it takes a long time. For some of them, God answered them, they got married, and some still waiting. And we need to wait because God can see the future. We cannot. We need to have patience. And you need to know that God's timing is always perfect. So how does God speak to us? God speaks to us through many ways, through the Holy Spirit, through people, the Bible, circumstances, even through nature, preachers, miracles, and so forth. And your job is to pray patiently while waiting on God. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And Lamentations 3 verse 25 says, The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. So be patient and trust God that He knows what is best for you. Even if you have to wait a long time. Let me tell you my story. I prayed to God for a long time about what I have to do in this life. When I became a Christian after I lost my second brother, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what God wanted me to do. So I started to pray and pray and I kept on praying and it was quiet. I started to study psychology um, and then I finished psychology and I still did not have peace in my spirit about psychology. I kept on praying. I just knew I wanted to help people. And then one day I was traveling between China and Hong Kong. Um, I was at the Hong Kong part and my train, I just got out and I turned right and I walked and the other train opposite of us just stopped and the doors opened up and all of these people just came out and I just stood there and these people just coming past me, just, I've never seen so many people in my life. And I looked at them and it, I felt God speak in my spirit and asking me, Daniel, where do you think these people are going to go when they die? And in that moment, I felt God's love for them. And I looked at them and I started to pray and I said, God, you know where they're going to go. I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to go to heaven. I want them to have eternal life. If you want me to preach the gospel to people of different cultures, then I will do it. But you need to tell me. I stood there. I couldn't move. The tears just came down my face. That night I went home. I, I picked up my Bible and I read and I said, God, I'm going to continue reading. I'm, I'm going to continue growing with you spiritually as I've been doing for the last few years. But God, I want you to speak to me about what you want me to do in this world. You speak to me a little bit about something here, something there, something here, but this big thing that I've been praying for so long, you need to answer me. And I'm not going to leave you until you answer me. And uh, I continued to read where I stopped the, the previous night and I opened and it was Romans. Whew. Romans 1 verse 1, which says, Paul, a bond servant of Christ, called as an apostle, which is a special messenger, personal chosen representative, set apart for the gospel of God, the good news of salvation. When I read this part, I felt how God spoke to me again with a rima word, deep in my spirit. It stood up and I knew God was speaking to me and He was calling me. to spread the gospel to all cultures and all people. And the world just changed. It was not the same. I, I, I phoned my father. He was still alive back then. I phoned him. I said, Dad, <laughs> I explained to him the whole story. This is just what happened. And he was quiet on the phone. I said, hello, you still there? And after a while, he started to speak and he said, sorry, I'm crying because God told me a few years ago, while you were still young, that he has called you to preach the gospel and to take over from me. <laughs> so I cried, but I had this peace, oh, the purpose that surpasses all understanding, knowing what I have to do with my life. 
You see, my dad, he said, I didn't want to tell you because I wanted God to tell you. And it was at the right time because I wasn't ready. If he called me to be <laughs> a preacher before then, I wasn't ready. Not yet. And so God told me at the right time. And you need to know that when you pray to God about something, He will usually confirm it two or three times. And then you know it is from Him. And there are also many reasons to why people cannot hear God and why He sometimes is silent. I'll make a video about that sometime. But I want you to know that when you are living holy before God, when you live righteous before Him, when you're serious about your relationship with God, not just, oh, I'm a Christian. No, you're a child of God, a real reborn Christian. And you walk with God daily. If you seek Him and pray, breakthrough prayer, prevailing prayer, then God will answer you. Not according to your will, not always, unless your will is in line with God, but He will answer you according to His will. And if you're a young Christian, be patient because it takes time to grow spiritually, to learn the difference between your, your soul, which is your own intellect, your emotions and your will and the Holy Spirit. It takes time, so be patient. First, you need to get to know God. You need to get to know who He really is. And it starts with reading the Bible. For me, it is still a shock to hear that there are so many Christians out there who have never even read the Bible from cover to cover. They've been Christians for years, but they don't read Scripture. And it is God's Word. He already revealed it to us. It is the most precious thing in this world that you can have. Truth of life itself, of God. And then when you read it and you study it, you get to know who God is how He acts, how He thinks, and how He loves us. And as you read it, the Word of God also cuts right through your soul and your spirit. And if you want some help to know the difference between your soul and your spirit, then watch this video right here and it will definitely help you out. And remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my 